Our mentor CEO, Mark Peterson, was fortunate to be able to take the famous blogger, Melanie Gunnell, author of Mel's Kitchen Cafe blog, to visit our program in Ghana, Africa this past summer. With three million individual hits per month on her website, she's captivated the hearts of millions of readers with her tried and true kitchen recipes. She is well loved by her kitchen cafe community. Melanie and her husband, Brian, went to, with Mark to visit several of the villages in Abamusu, Ghana, where they were able to meet hundreds of Mentors International clients who are currently working their way out of poverty with a hand up, not a handout. Melanie posted a moving article on her website at the end of August about her experiences. And that one blog has generated over $50,000 with 600 new donors for Mentors International. <laughs> Melanie is with us tonight, and we've asked her to share a little bit about her experience with our guests. Please welcome Melanie Gunnell. Thank you and good evening. It is an honor to be with you tonight and I will apologize in advance because my voice apparently decided not to make the drive down from Boise with me. So I hope you can understand what I'm going to say but um, I, for nearly the last decade, I have spent my free time blogging and that would be food blogging in particular. What this means is that several times a week I tell millions of people about how this curry dish or maybe that brownie recipe is going to change their lives. And I have been very adamant over the years that food can be life-changing and actually good food can be life-changing. Earlier this year in June, when I had the remarkable opportunity to travel to Ghana with Mentors International, I learned for the first time what life-changing really meant. And it had nothing to do with delicious curry or brownies. My husband Brian and I traveled with a wonderful group of people to Ghana, including doTERRA executive Greg Cook, who represented doTERRA's Healing Hands Foundation there. <clears throat> doTERRA has been a major contributor to pave the way for mentors to do incredible work in Ghana. It was amazing to see it firsthand. However, many of our first glimpses in Ghana of life and humanity were incredibly sobering. We saw such desperate conditions of poverty and sorrow and deplorable situations that it was almost too much for my very first world privileged mind to take in. I honestly wondered, how can this ever change? Can this abject poverty truly be overcome? It is so widespread. It is almost too much. My heart felt really heavy and sorrowful. And then we met the mentors clients. These men and women have lived, and some still live, in the same poverty-stricken situations that I had seen my first few days in Ghana. Hundreds of these clients gathered together in a cultural celebration to give thanks to mentors and to doTERRA for the amazing change their lives have taken since being introduced to the remarkable microloan and training program that mentors offers. Compared with the downcast, lifeless, hollow eyes of the people I had seen first, these beautiful men and women were so proud. I will always remember when Greg Cook stood in front of these clients and told them how beautiful they looked in their finest clothes, and he praised them for paying back 100% of their loans. Their own clapping and cheering was absolutely deafening. You could feel of their happiness, and mostly, you could feel, tangibly feel, of their sweet gratitude. They know what their life could be like. They've seen it for generations in their own families and in their own villages, but they want more, and they deserve more. As we moved beyond the large cultural celebration and had a chance to spend several days talking and meeting with these amazing Ghanaian men and women who are working with mentors, my heart was softened. It was lifted up beyond that feeling I had felt initially of the heavy and sorrowful to a place of absolute hope. Alamenu, who was living off of 75 cents a day when all she wanted and needed was 
to set up a roadside table to sell bread and oatmeal to support her mother and her child. With mentors, she was able to make that happen. She gives me hope. Gladys, the refugee from Nigeria, who has suffered unimaginable loss and yet wants desperately to provide for her family, including some of her sister's children. So she bakes 1,500 loaves of bread every day in an old clay oven, and she's already looking for ways to expand her business. She gives me hope. Naomi, the crippled single mother who was denied financing from every other institution that she approached and who was shunned by her own community because of her disabilities, but turned her life around with the help of mentors and a lot of hard work and is now one of the most successful businessmen or women for miles around. She gives me hope. Although desperately different than you and I with our opportunities and our privileges, fundamentally, it became starkly clear after talking to client after client that their desires and hopes are not that different from mine. They love their families. They want to provide for their children and their grandchildren, and especially give those children the opportunity for education. They want to have food on the table and a roof over their heads to protect them. They want to have control over their future, and they can. I am absolutely certain that with mentors, they can. The men and women who have small loans with mentors in Ghana are changing their own circumstances to be self-reliant and to teach their children these same principles of hard work, loan repayment, and education. Their lives are truly changing, and I will be grateful every day for the rest of my life that in a small country, in a short trip across the ocean to Africa, my life was changed because of the strength and the example of these men and women. With the help of mentors furthered by generous donations, can we even imagine how many more lives can be changed? Thank you.